Hi there. I was just thinking about rotten tomatoes and bananas. No, I was thinking about how in 2013, mid 2013, Russia passed an anti propaganda bill, law, I should say, that it was anti gay propaganda, but essentially it was anti SJW propaganda. L, a law that bans those things. Ever since that time, we've seen the sort of intersectionality thing increase by a tenfold in Western countries. I think about this Monty Python skit. I think it was Monty Python, where there's a joke that if you read it, you laugh and then die. And the government decided to weaponize it. And at some point, they have the joke written in a different language. And they'll give it to all these, to, to the soldiers who don't know that other language. And they'll go to the country in that they want to attack. And they'll, they'll all say as loudly as possible, with, even with, with、uh, megaphones and all that, they'll all say the joke. They won't be affected by it because it's in a different language. And so the whole intersectionality thing is like a weapon, a social weapon brought onto Western industrialized countries. Now, who would benefit from that? I don't know. What country, but what it, what it makes me think about is what country would be the most immune? To the intersectionality mindset. What country would be the least able to be affected by it? Now, it seems like it's able to eat, it's, it's able to affect the European countries and Canada more quickly than the US. Here in the US, we still have the First Amendment, and that certainly helps. But You know, but it's, it's ending up, it's turning into a fight between、uh, the crazy side of the intersectionalists against people who are labeled as fascist. When certain obstructionists become too irritating, label them after suitable buildups as fascist or Nazi or anti Semitic. And use the prestige of anti fascist and tolerance organizations to discredit them. In the public mind, constantly associate those who oppose us with those names which already have a bad smell. What an incredible smell you've discovered! The association will, after enough repetition, become fact in the public mind. It's the intersectionalists versus the fascists. Would Russia. Be immune to this sort of thing? Have they seen enough of that kind of mindset in the past that, you know, in a slightly different form, that they're just like, no? Now, China doesn't seem to be affected by the whole intersectionality too much, especially not on racial issues. They're, they're pretty racist in China. And I've made a video in the past saying, hey, you know, I wonder if this is a weapon of sorts. And, and I do. I still wonder whether it's a weapon of sorts. I was having a conversation with someone who had been on forums and for, for, you know, since the 90s, political forums. They were awesome at debate, they were awesome at, at being rational and logical. And in my last conversation with that person, One of their, their comments was logic schmogic. Logic schmogic? Holy crap, how deluded do you have to be to have that as an argument? Logic schmogic. When that was said, I was just like, I, you, you've got to be fucking kidding me. I mean, that's, that's worse than, than a bad stereotype of some. A、uh, creationist trying to defend creationism. Behold the atheist's nightmare. You know, it's just like logic, schmogic. You gotta be fucking kidding me. 
And these are people who were really good at logic before. They were good at it. They were great debaters. And now it's if you criticize non-binary people, you're denying their existence. If you don't acknowledge the concept of non-binary, then you're denying the existence of non-binary. You're trying to erase non-binary people. Erase? What? What? You don't know what they go through. But what? And then eventually, logic schmogic. It's mainly because I was making the argument that when people want others to totally acknowledge the concept of non-binary, that they have to end up looking at themselves as well. They have to start looking and questioning their own sense of gender as well. If they're to acknowledge it in other people, it's logical. If you want to be logically consistent, you have to... You have to put it onto yourself to, to, to try it on just to make sure it makes sense. It's not like some, you can't expect people to, to hold, to acknowledge something that they don't believe or acknowledge something that doesn't make sense. You, you, you can't expect that onto someone. So they have to apply it to themselves in order to really look at it. And, I, and like I said in my, in my videos, I don't want to have to, uh, I don't want to apply a different version of gender, but I will call people what they want, you know? But that's just, it doesn't seem good enough. If, unless you just fully acknowledge, then you're, you're trying to erase non-binary people. Logic schmogic. But yeah, it just almost seems like it rots people's brains. It's, it's an ideology that, that, it's, it's just it just leaves a path of destruction. It's not really a religion, although in the past I've talked about it seeming like a religion. Intersectionality. Boobs. No, I don't have them anymore. I don't have boobs anymore. Not really. Sure did when I was heavy, though. My goodness. And now, thank goodness from Chef Boyardee is going through my head. Then there'd be the disturbing bug chasers out there who would sing, Thank goodness I've got HIV. But what would it mean for a country to be using a mindset, an ideology as a weapon? To what end? And that's what makes most of this absurd in the first place. I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's an absurd conspiracy theory. But it really does feel like a weapon sometimes. Th there's no light at the end of that tunnel, you know?